Hey guys, Rochelle here with Amethyst Ascension. If you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, thank you so much for joining me. So I am doing another hashtag. This one is by uh, the lovely Marlena uh, Teresa. And the name of the hashtag is hashtag tarot to the extreme. And as soon as I seen her do this the other day, I was like, oh yeah, I definitely want to do this one. It is so fun. It's so different. I thought it was just genius. So essentially there are seven different prompts and it is like verses. So like for instance, the first one, and I will be putting the prompts down below, um, as well as a link over to uh, Marlena's channel and her original uh, video on this. So the first one is minimalist versus maximalist tarot decks. So minimalist, I thought of this one, Vision Quest. It is absolutely beautiful. I love, it, it feels minimal to me in comparison to a lot of decks that I have. Maybe because it feels so serene to me, so peaceful. The colors are mutable or more muted, I should say. Um, soft and the messages on here are beautiful. The names of the cards are beautiful. It's so soft and it just feels like very minimal to me. So in comparison to the maximalist is the Spirit Keepers. Spirit Keepers because this deck is so jam-packed full of different cultures, um, uh, different like pantheons. It has uh, the I Ching. It has astrological associations, the artwork. There's so much. I mean, even in the book of maps, if she were to do, and I mean, uh, Ben and Bell, when this is by Ben and Bell, and this is the Revelations edition, if she was to do a deck just on all of the backgrounds of all of these, I could see her doing something like that because in the book, all of the backgrounds are so detailed, and then she puts other stuff on top of it. You wouldn't know how detailed it was unless you went through the book and read the book. It's just fascinating amazing she's got so much um, magical correspondence in this it, it's just yeah it's a lot it is wonderfully a lot so those are my two for minimalist versus maximalist So the next category is daytime versus nighttime tarot. So these are the two that I had, daytime and nighttime. So the Muse tarot just literally feels so bright. It's like spring. It's like the, the sun is coming out. I mean, just even the backs alone. It's so bright and airy, and this just speaks daytime to me. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. The color palette, all the flowers, and... Mm, yeah. Definitely daytime. The nighttime is the intuitive night goddess tarot. And this is like a starry night, right? They're all under the backdrop of a starry night. So this is definitely nighttime to me and it's even in the name. <laughs> 
How gorgeous. And I love them both in different ways. But yeah, that was definitely my daytime versus nighttime. Sorry guys, I'm trying to pause it so that you're not watching all of, you know, this. So the next category is the best shuffle versus the worst shuffle. So the best shuffle, and I have a few decks that are just really good for shuffling, but this is one that I had close and I thought, yeah, and I'm sorry, this is the uh, Cosmic Visions Tarot. This is a Kickstarter. It's like, um, and I've said this before, it's like a really light, when you, when I think of rose petal, I think of like shag carpet, like thick, but this is like really fine carpet. I mean, it is rose petal, but it's like a, a really thin rose petal, or I don't know. I, there's a difference, but I don't know exactly how to, you know, describe the difference. This one shuffles so good. Let me do one more. Oh, yeah, baby. Gosh, I love a good shuffle. And I love this deck, too. Oh, my gosh. I mean, any deck with a full card like that has my attention from the get-go, right? It's instant love. <laughs> instant love. There's so many awesome cards in this. Wow. Okay. Well, anyways. Oh, that's just irritating me. All right. And the worst, and it's not the worst, it's one of the worst, is the um, 78 Tarot Elemental. This, oh my goodness, the deck itself is just gorgeous. I love it. I love the fact that it is a mod podge of different artists. But, I mean, the artwork... It is so varied because it's a collaborative deck. But I love that because especially if you're doing like fast readings, which is not so easy with this deck for me because my hands, my fingers are so short. But one second. Sorry, it's like Grand Central Station here. So um, the artwork is stunning. I absolutely love this deck and I have the other one too or one of the other in the um, Elemental 78 Elemental decks but this deck is so big I mean look at if I were to just try look at I mean it's just not gonna happen there's no way even with just a very few, I can't do it that way. So the way that I shuffle this, which is not my preferred, but because of the size of my short hands, short stubby hands, <laughs> I have to shuffle sometimes like this, even with other decks. I, I call it like waterfall shuffling because it's just, and I can't even like shuffle like this like overhand. I have to go like this. So it definitely holds me back a little bit, but I do love the deck. That's just one of my issues with it. So the next category is confronting deck versus comforting deck. And I have So, confronting, and don't get me wrong, 
I think any deck can be confronting, just like I think any deck can be comforting, to be honest with you. But this is probably the one I thought of the most. It's the Mariel. This is the second edition. Just because the artwork is just so different. You really have to dig in. But I mean, just by the artwork itself, it is like <laughs> in your face. Okay? It's gorgeous. I love it. I love having to explore this. But, I mean, that is like confronting, man. Yeah, so the Mariel for confronting and for comforting the Tarot of Light by Denise Jarvie and Tony Carmine Salerno. This deck is so soft and loving and it has beautiful um, uh, keywords. I mean, yeah. It's just a beautiful I, yeah, it's just comforting. I mean, it's, what else can you say other than I just, I find the artwork so calming and serene and um, really, you know, uh, heart chakra centered. I love the light. I'm comforted by the light and the messages in this. Yeah. This is um, modified, too. I just still have to edge it. but So that was my confronting and my comforting decks. Okay, so the next category is every day versus ever so often. Every so often. So every day, I grabbed this one. <laughs> Everyday Witch. <laughs> I'm so basic, right? <laughs> this is definitely an everyday deck for me. I could use this and pull this out and it be just like easy peasy. This is also one of my best decks for shuffling too because all the Lou Ellen. I, I, I know some people hate this, um cardstock but for me I love it because I can shuffle it so nice right yeah so I love this deck I relate I think this was probably my very first I believe it was my very first deck that I really just really got it just started clicking for me where I just understood the meanings it just kind of like stuck so that one and my ever so often even though my gosh I love this deck don't get me wrong I love it but it's not like every day because I am taken away and this this is something that I would use for uh, predominantly like past life stuff because this really sparks or invokes historical times and I've talked about this before on uh, like my good mood decks it just this takes me away to another time and another another place and another world uh, you know so it's not something that I use every day not to mention this is kind of big too and i doubt that i can no i can't shuffle it that way either i have to shuffle this one like a waterfall as well which i mean it's not a deal breaker for me it never is because i mean let's face it when my hands are like this my fingers are that short i mean look at <laughs> you see the difference so uh, pretty much everything that I try to 
shuffle other than like your Llewellyn or, Llewellyn or something that has like really flexible cardstock, really thin cardstock, I'm not going to be able to shuffle it. Like I like to shuffle them. So those were my two for the um, everyday versus ever so often. And then the next prompt, prompt is overrated versus underrated. So, I am probably going to get a little bit of slack for this, but, I mean, this is, this is how I feel. This is my truth. Um, I think overrated is RWS. All of the, and I don't mean the deck itself. I don't mean the system itself. And, you know, I particularly do like this deck. This is the Radiant Wise. I don't mean it for this particular version. I mean it for how many damn iterations of the same deck and artwork does there have to be? That in itself, to me, just to me personally, no offense to anybody else that likes to collect and all that, I say more power to you and you do you. It's just for me, it feels a bit much. I like variety and I feel like you can only do this you know I'm, I'm I kind of understand why they do it also though because everybody everybody and their brother can pretty much make a deck because it's uh public domain artwork so then they can just manipulate it and you know what I mean not that I have not seen some awesome uh versions of this and I have one that I really really like it's all blingy and stuff. <laughs> but I just think it's kind of like overplayed as far as how many different iterations of the same deck and artwork that there is. So that's my overrated bit, which is the, you know, the tons of them. The underrated is another deck that I recently acquired. It's the Wandering Moon Tarot. I think this is fabulous. Look at how pretty the backs are. Look at the gilding, which I'm not really like super fond of gilding. The shuffle's pretty good. It's so pretty in the light. I love that bit. I love the simple artwork. I like that it's stars, swords, moons, and crystals, I believe. Now watch, when I'm looking for the other one, I can't find it. <laughs> oh, wands. Wands, swords. But the wands are crystals. That's right. I just love the concept of this. I think the artwork is so, so pretty. I love the blingy bling, <laughs> which is going to wear off with me. I know it will, but I love the backs. I love the shimmery. I love moons. So, yeah, this one, I have not seen tons of people unless I'm just, like, not with it, which could be the case. I have not seen tons of people using this deck. And so, for that reason, I think it's underrated, and I think more people should have it if, if they're drawn to that. So, those are my two for overrated and underrated. And the last category is light work versus shadow work. And let me just say, that is like, in my opinion, very cliche. I think you can do light work and shadow work with any deck. But to go along with this particular hashtag, of course I'm going to use the light seers. Although, as I've said before, the Light Seers was one of those decks that, for me, actually helped me see the light and the shadow aspects of the tarot more, um, uh, more prevalently, I should say. You know, it brought it more out because of the book. I love this book, by the way. 
Lights, so for the Nine of Cups, the light seer side is gifts from the universe, choosing joy, manifested dreams, gratitude, abundance, stepping into alignment with purpose and using all of your gifts. And then the shadow seer side, delayed gratification, unfulfilled desires, smugness, unmanifested dreams, greed, blocking your path, not appreciating the simple things in life. It just, and then it made it really, really clear but granted, I love a good guidebook, okay? I will buy a deck if I know that the guidebook is really good too. Even if I'm not particularly fond of the artwork, which is usually not the case. But, so there's a message from the Nine of Cups. There's questions that you can ask yourself. Some of those questions are the shadow side. Some are the, the light side. And there's like a little affirmation. I open my grateful heart to the gifts that are coming my way. So I really look at this as a very empowering deck and very light because I think in order for us to have empowerment and to know thyself, we have to go through both the light and the shadow so yeah light seers and then for the um shadow <laughs> i'm like so cliche <laughs> the macabre tarot <laughs> i just love that <laughs> and this is like the shadow side of tarot and we're doing a series. I'm doing a series with Courtney, but um, that's kind of on hold right now because there is uh, the dreaded C word going through her household right now. So she is currently recuperating. And so that's been put on hold. But the macabre. Which is very cliche, but it is what it is. So those were the seven prompts. As I said, this tag was started by the lovely Marlena uh, over at Marlena Teresa channel. I will be putting a link down below to her original video as well as all of the seven prompts. I would love to see you do this as well. This is a super fun tag and I am sending you love always. Thank you so much.